Well, it's day 44 in our countdown to the Olympic Games, the 32nd Olympic Games, and they were rescheduled from 2020. And we're 75 days to the 16th Paralympic Games in Tokyo. The Summer Games run from July 24th to 8th, and the Paralympic Games from August 24th to September 5th, if you wanted to know or mark it down your calendar. I started this series last week on talking about the rules of the road or the rules of the jungle. And I want to continue with this whole thing of dealing with confrontation. What happens when life's challenges come to us? We're in the middle of this pandemic and we're faced with this challenge of what do we do in this circumstance? Now, I can tell you this is that when I see a pandemic like situation come along, in other words, I'm set back or set out or had to sit out because of an injury or because of knee surgery or back surgery or whatever I had to go through. It was always the happiest time. Yeah, you heard that right. It was the happiest time because I knew it was time for me to reset and regrow. Because when you're in the middle of the fight, when you're in the middle of the battle, it's really hard to work on improving yourself. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and you're listening to 831 Living Your Best Life podcast, where we inspire participation, communicate precision, and empower performers to podium. And we hope you'll tell your friends and relatives and those you work with that go to their favorite podcast provider or junglejimhunter.com or YouTube and subscribe and download and click on like, rate, and review us based on the value of what we teach you, not on the entertainment, and that you will become an 831 or somebody that wants to make the difference in somebody else's life because this has made a difference in your life. Well, sportcology, as I've said before in this podcast, is the study and science of sport and how it affects life. And because we expect and demand that everyone plays by the rules or you get disqualified, we figure it's the best place to look at trying to find how we can grow and develop the best way possible. There's no compromise in sport. And there's people that cheat, but the cheaters get caught. And you can't step on a line or you're disqualified. And yesterday we talked about the first part of the cloverleaf. And for those of you that maybe have just joined me, I'm talking about how to deal with confrontation on the road of life. The rules of the road, the rules of the jungle. And the rules of the road are standard. They're, they're what gravity is. You know what? If I drop something, it falls every time. It never goes up. It never changes. But those rules of the road, road are set. But the rules of the jungle are the unexpected things, the COVID-19 things that come along. And we're talking about when we deal with a challenge, a confrontation that comes in our lives, we have to get off the main road and go through this cloverleaf. Yes, you have to go through all four stages to get back on the road. Now, if you don't, you end up being in the same place that you always were. And you make another lap around the mountain. And the, if I said on this program before, when you go another lap around the mountain, well, that becomes a trail, which becomes a rut, which becomes a moat, which eventually becomes what you just let your dreams die in. I want you to get out of there. I want you to climb the mountain. I want you to build the mountain you want to climb. And you build it by growing. So. We're going to move on and get you to understand this cloverleaf. So I want you to realize that if you get back on the road again and repeat the same habit, you'll never learn anything. But if you take the time to learn something, then you grow and develop. And in dealing with confrontation, there are seven areas. And we discussed those yesterday. Today, I want you to get a picture of where you're going before we move on to the challenge of today. We have to visualize the cloverleaf or draw one and put confrontation on the outside of the first quarter of the cloverleaf and then draw the rest of the cloverleaf. And the quarter below the first one is deconstruction. And when you're faced with a confrontation, the next thing you will have to do after identifying what emotions and what upset there is need to be worked on is in deconstruction. This also has seven parts to it, and it is the core work that has to be done when you are retaining, retraining your emotions. Now, why is that so important? Here's why it's so important. Because when you're dealing with a confrontation, and if you always just say, 
do this, do that. This is the way I've always done it. But it's not working, then nobody grows. And so you have to deconstruct what you are in the middle of, and you have to relearn it. I want you to um, hear that through this story. I tell you about an Olympian. You've heard his story before. If you've listened to these podcasts, I've mentioned him before. I want to go back to him again on a different part of his life. Percy Williams was fresh out of high school and had built his own training group to push through. He would have six friends who were part of his group, all start ahead of him at varying distances, and then he would say, go, and he would race to pass each one of those. And he wanted to pass them before he reached the finish line. And we see this again and again in the best of the best of the best athletes. They find ways to push through to succeed. And success is not being first, but rather pushing through tougher and tougher barriers to get to first. Based on his times, he was slated to go to the Olympic trials in Ontario, and he would travel by train. This is 1928. And to keep training, he noticed that the mail cars were the longest cars, and he asked if he could run from one end to the other in the mail cars. And so he would practice his starts, he would work on his acceleration, and do whatever he could do inside the rail cars. And when the train was stopped, he would run and keep his conditioning up at as many stops as he thought were necessary. And this interruption and the days of inactivity would have placed him at risk when he arrived at the trials. And so his world of training had to be totally reconsidered. It had to be reconstructed. It had to be deconstructed first because he was used to being on a grassy field. Now he's on a railway track. This would also be what would happen when they made it to the trip to Amsterdam by boat for the game. So he was preparing for both. Most athletes would get upset and emotionally react, but not those that are emotionally stable. Instead, Percy Williams developed training methods and focused and prepared himself and kept himself sharp so that he didn't have to make up lost ground in training and preparation when he arrived at the trials or at the games. Confrontation, the first quarter of the cloverleaf, causes an emotional reaction leading to an automatic response. And as you make the loop around the challenge you're faced with, you want to get back on the road as quickly as possible. So you have to go through the second quarter of the cloverleaf, the deconstruction phase. What you did before has to be deconstructed. Stable people may not make this mistake, but most of us do when we get angry and upset. And so you have to go through and know the steps in this phase. You will have to deal with your first reaction and communicate with yourself what is wrong, what you did wrong, if you reacted, and then maybe repair the damage with those you've offended. It's the person who smiles and stays calm that will get the help they need. You know what you did before, so you can't be doing the same things again. So you have to sever that kind of behavior and thinking and surrender what you wish and want and would have done and with a humble heart, seek a new solution. So who are you? What you need and how important you think you may be is the least important component of this step. Now, it's very important that you understand that because most people say when they're upset, do you know who I am? Do you know what kind of pain I'm in? Do you know what kind of difficulty I'm in? That is not important when you're dealing with a confrontation right away. You eventually will deal with it, but right now you have to move on. Once you find and can communicate a solution, implementing the new plan and working with those involved, this must be your priority. The last part of the deconstruction stage is monitoring and maintaining the focus toward what you know you need to do and continue to grow. And you must also make restitution and healing to those that are affected by your new reality in their lives. So, if a father and a mother are trying to teach their child how to do something and they keep on harping on when are you going to do your training? When are you going to do your homework? When are you going to do this? Or you have a situation where you have to do something you have to do. If you've avoided it or if you've dealt with it inappropriately, you have to make restitution there. You have to repair that breach so that emotionally the person that is impaired, they can move on as much as you can move on. And it's more for your benefit than it is for their benefit. 
Not everyone will agree when they see change. So you will have to continue to monitor reaction to your improvising and imposition in others and to maintain those relationships with kindness and respect. See, Percy Williams would have had to be aware of the change of personnel at each stop and community to be able to maintain his opportunity to use the mail car and run along the tracks at the stations, making sure he wasn't offending anybody. Every time they would go through a new community, there would be a change of staff at the certain days and points, and there would be new conductors, new people, and he had to do it all over again so that he could stay focused on his training. He would have to do this at every change, reloading the mail car and emptying the mail car each time new people joined the train. Learning to communicate with gentleness and respect, knowing you are asking others to change when you yourself have to change because of the challenging confrontation, it is very hard to do. It's rare to find someone that will be so flexible. It's why I love sportcology and the study of it, because we see this in sport all the time. I have to learn it as a child, twice. Prior to my brain concussion, I was one type of 10-year-old. I was a different kid up to the age of 10. I was good at everything, and I had a winning personality. I was compliant most of the time. After the accident and I went through rehab, I was angry, upset, and frustrated. A different kid. My parents were not prepared for who and what they had to deal with. My parents had to retrain themselves and retrain me. Like Percy Williams, I had to learn to adjust on the go and come up with new ways to get to where I wanted to go. Thus, I trained on the seat of a tractor. Why? Because my mother and father said I have to be stabilized. And it may appear to be meanness to you to force a kid of 11 years of age, 12 years of age to be driving a tractor all day. But I couldn't go to school and I was available and I knew how to drive the tractor because we grew up farming. But it was a place for me to stabilize myself and to control my emotions and to learn that in confrontation, I had to deconstruct the way I thought and reconstruct which is the next phase, into a new way of doing things. I trained on the seat of the tractor, in the barn loft, on top of my dad's truck, inside a tractor wheel. I did whatever I could find to do to be prepared to become an Olympic skier, even though I was on a farm farming. You have to deconstruct what was to become a better of what you will be. I know that sounds like a funny sentence, but let me say it again. You have to deconstruct what was to become. In other words, what you thought you were going to be to become a better of what you will become. Our Olympians can teach us one level of this and our Paralympians can teach us an even deeper level of this. No race goes the way it was planned. No playoff game the way we thought it would go because some teams have athletes that can deconstruct on the fly and some cannot. It's unavoidable. Face the giant and train them to where you manage them, the confrontations that come in your life, rather than them managing you. Percy Williams became a double gold medalist at the ninth Olympic Games in Amsterdam because he deconstructed what he was normally doing, reconstructed it, and in the process, continue to improve and prepare himself for the games. You can do the same thing. My quote for the day, every giant of a problem you are facing will only get larger the longer you wait to deal with it. I know this is a lot to think about, but I want you to understand, I want you to get it, that this is the way you change and grow. You don't keep doing what you've always done because you'll always get the same result. You face the confrontation, the reality of it, and you deconstruct it. And tomorrow we're going to talk about reconstructing it. Think about it this way. If you were going to build a new deck on the back of your house, you'd have to take the old one away first before you could build the new one. And you'd have to have a plan for what you're going to build. And before you reconstruct the new one, the old one would have to be taken away and you'd remember what you enjoyed about it and what you wanted to keep and what you want to get rid of. But you have to do the same thing when you're faced with confrontation. 
It isn't a matter of having to be right because I got to be right. The only time it works is when you look at the other person's point of view and understand what they're up against. Percy Williams would have had to have faced conductors and mailmen and people that maybe didn't want him to run in the mail car or run along the tracks and try to make him know that he was going to miss the train if he didn't get on the train really quick. But he worked with the people and he did it anyway because he was emotionally stable about what he was going to do. Thank you for listening. And I hope you will have grown and will be living your best life the next time we meet.